I'm going to school you on the 20 tried and true techniques that us debt-free graduates use to pass every single test. So grab your pencil, school's in session. Hi everybody, my name is Sarah. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you don't know me, I'm the owner of FrozenPennies.com. I'm a financial coach, a life coach, and as a family, we are debt-free. I wanted to chat a little bit today about the 20 tried and true things that debt people always do in order to remain debt free. These are the things kind of like the behind the scenes little tips and secrets that we do as debt free people so we never go back into debt again. Let's talk about communication. Not only are we communicating with our partner on a daily, weekly or monthly basis about how our money situation is going, we're also communicating with those people around us. If you are trying to get out of debt, you may be practicing this new loud budgeting thing that says, you know, I just don't have uh, the money this week to go out to dinner, but let's have dinner at our house instead. We are trying really hard to get out of debt. This happens with the circle of friends that we have as well. They know that we are debt free and they know that we want to remain that way. So they know that there are values that we will incorporate into our life to show what we value and where we would rather spend our money. Something called budget bonding. That means you're bonding with your family over finances. I know this kind of sounds silly and crazy, but it's actually something that we practice. My sons know our financial situation. They're very aware of it. They know that we have a budget. That if it's not in the budget, it's not in the budget. You're going to have to wait. If you're looking for a budget, I highly encourage you to grab this free, downloadable, printable budget planner. I'll leave a link in the comments below. Sit down regularly and discuss your goals. Not only your financial goals, but say your vacation goals. Where do we want to go this year for vacation? How much do we have to save? What's the budget look like? Where do we want to stay? Do we want to go to the beach? Do we want to go to Disney? Do we want to stay on grounds at a resort or do we want to do an Airbnb? How much is that going to cost and what will it look like for our budget? Next, financial education. If you are debt free and have small children or teenagers, preteens, consider financial education for them too. Even simple things like playing board games, playing Monopoly and teaching them what taxes are. Oi, taxes. How to manage money, how to use money, how to budget money. Monopoly is a great game for that. Also, consider putting a time limit on your Monopoly game because that game can go on for a really long time. Next, we research and we comparison shop. No matter what we're buying, whether it be car parts or the new vacuum cleaner, we're going to comparison shop. We're going to do our research. We're going to read reviews and we're going to find the perfect new vacuum cleaner for us. Next, secondhand treasures. I don't know many people in my circle that are debt free who are not buying secondhand. I talk about this all the time. The love that I have for secondhand furniture is unprecedented. You can't find better quality furniture than you can at the secondhand store. Thrift stores, garage sales, online marketplaces are a great place to find what you're looking for. Always, always, always go there first before buying new. Meal planning mastery. Even if you don't have a full meal plan menu taped to your refrigerator, you know that how you shop stock your pantry, you can shop and meal plan from your pantry on a daily or weekly basis. I know the way that I shop these days is just to grocery shop to restock the pantry and the freezer. So I'm meal planning now from the freezer and from the pantry. Unless there's something very specific or particular that I want to try as far as a new recipe goes, I won't shop that week for that dinner. I will shop to replenish what I already have so I can meal plan from what I already have. This works great because you can shop loss leaders and deals and get those things to restock. Now, I'm not saying that we never go out to dinner either. I want to make that clear. As somebody who's debt free, we do have date nights and we do order pizza or takeout. I try to limit that to twice a month. 
For a while, there was once a week with the local pizza place, but we got really bored of it really fast. So now it's back to like twice a month. Going out to dinner cost us as a couple at least $75. And that's not even including things like adult beverages or appetizers or desserts. That's just a couple of iced teas and a couple of dinners and tip. It's not cheap to go out to Texas Roadhouse anymore. Next, grow your greens. I've talked about this in other videos. Grow as much as you possibly can. Now, I'm not really a gardener, although I say every single spring that I'm going to give it a try. This year, I am going to plant my own lavender seeds because I wanted lavender for around the pool. And every single time I go to the garden center to buy it, every single year for the last five years, it's already gone. I can't seem to find it. So I bought my own seeds. I want to plant it around the pool because it's supposed to repel the mosquitoes and those little tiny sweat bees, but I can't find it. So I found seeds. I'm going to grow my own lavender this year in the window in the dining room and see what I can get from it. It only cost me a dollar to get the seeds. If you're interested in learning about gardening, I have a friend who's got a free gardening workshop. I'm gonna leave a link below to Helene's gardening workshop. She's from Canada, so she's teaching you how to grow your own garden practically the entire year long. Check it out, I'll leave a link below. And next, let's practice a little self-control. I know this is a little hard for me to do as well, but being debt-free means I've got some discipline behind me to back it up. I've been able to be disciplined over the last few years to A, get out of debt, and B, not go back into debt again. Even though I would really love to go get a loan on my paid off house in order to put the extension on that I want in the back, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna save my money, I'm going to practice self-control, I'm going to do it in stages, and when I say I, I really mean my husband, it's going to be done in stages so we don't have to go out and get a loan to pay for it. A great option for daily self-control and online shopping is to put all of the things in your cart and wait until the end of the month. This especially works well if you only get paid once a month at the beginning of the month. By the end of the month, you'll really be able to reevaluate what you actually need from that card based on how much money you may have left. I love this one, a financial goals board, kind of like a vision board where you cut pictures out or you print things off and you stick it to the board. The financial goal part of it, for us it could be the vacation or the addition that we're talking about at the back of the house or the barn that my husband wants to build or the vacation. Did I say vacation? Really love vacations. It could be anything, it could be increasing your net worth. It could be investing in your retirement a little bit more. Being able to see it on a board, piece of paper taped to the refrigerator, it doesn't matter. Something that you can visually see to remind yourself that you're working on these things and you're going to continue working on them so you don't go back into debt. Thinking long term, what does it look like for my future? My husband is 12 and a half years older than I am. I'm considering what happens if, heaven forbid, something happens to him, where does that leave me financially? You know, we have savings, we have a home, we have things that I could sell, but if for some reason something crazy, heaven forbid, happens to him in the next five years, I only have my income and our savings to go on. So planning ahead to make sure that I have, we have enough money down the road in case anything happens, in case somebody gets sick, we can cover our expenses with that money. Beefing up that emergency fund as well as adding more into a retirement fund for me. What will your life look like in 20, 30, 40 years? Even if you're working hard to get out of debt right now, you have to plan ahead. You have to look ahead to the future and make sure you've got a plan. It's not forever, it's just for now. One foot in front of the other until you get where you wanna go. As somebody who's graduated from the debt-free university, we give. We love to give, we love to be kind, we love to, to donate to our favorite charities. We instill the value of giving back to our communities. Like Dave Ramsey says, 
live like no one else now so you can live and give like no one else later. One of the things that I truly agree with when it comes to Dave Ramsey's philosophy is giving back. I love to give to people in need, to community members who are going through a hard time. That's one of my favorite things. And we find balance. We automate as much as we possibly can taken out of our hands so we can concentrate on other things maybe fun things, maybe a new business, maybe grandchildren, maybe children in general. We like to find balance. We find balance in the saving as well as the spending. It is okay to spend, you just can't overspend. And many of us who are debt free and just frugal by nature still think of things like energy efficiency. I'm constantly turning off of the lights because I don't want our electric bill to skyrocket. I'm still looking for ways to save money, trying to be frugal on our grocery shopping and trying to be frugal when I need, say, clothes for spring. Turn energy efficiency into a game. See how much you can save each and every month. Make it a little bit fun. Multiple income streams. For us, we have several income streams. We're at a point in our financial life where we have invested in a couple of rental properties as well as a couple other jobs. Even my husband's got a side hustle or two that he can make some money in. There are several ways that we are bringing financial income into our home. You could think small, like if you have a hobby, you like to take pictures. You can maybe do children's first birthday parties and the weekends as a hobby to make some money. Or you can think bigger like our rental properties. And next, we as debt-free frugal people never carry a balance on our credit cards for more than 60 days. Now, the majority of us pay those off every single month. We use those credit cards because we figured that we can get earned gift cards from them for Christmas or we can earn points for our vacation or our airfare. But we never carry a balance on them unless we absolutely have to. If it's a big unexpected bill, you put that on your credit card, you might take 60 days to pay it off. But the last thing that we want to do is get that 29% interest payment and give that to the banks. Oh, the library love. We love the library. We love to, not only do we love the library, but we love to give back to our community. Our library has so many great features. We like to take advantage of that. If for nothing else but the love of the books, then at least to take part in the community. Something else that might be super fun are cash only challenges. Now, even if you're debt free and you know that you tend to overspend in a certain area, you might want to continue using cash for that area. If you have a problem at Target, you go in for toothpaste, deodorant, and laundry detergent, and you come up of there with $300 worth of stuff for your home and your cat in your car, then you might have a Target issue. You might want to consider going back to paying cash and having a Target budget just for that purpose. We find financial role models. Who can we emulate? Who's killing it in the financial department? How can we learn from what they are doing and make sure that whatever it is that they're doing will work for our lives? For example, if you want to start a YouTube channel, well, you find people who are killing it on YouTube, see what they're doing that works, and then learn from them. Learn from the YouTube gurus out there who are teaching you the best way to kill it and then emulate what they're doing. Or if you have financially savvy individuals that you know that are friends of yours or people in your community who are willing to share, then soak that in too. If you can't find any of those things, Read the books. Find the financially savvy people who are doing it and teaching it and writing about it. Read them. Take everything that you can from the books and then apply it. That's the most important part. Actually apply the techniques to your life. Emergency fund focus. Now that you are debt free and maybe your house is paid off, you can really sock it to that emergency fund. Put all of the money in there because you never know when something big is going to happen and you're going to need that money. What is that saying? Murphy's Law? 
if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It will rain. It always rains. Make sure that you have money to cover any unexpected things that might come up. And celebrate those milestones. Celebrate those milestones frugally if you want to, but celebrate them. Instead of expensive celebrations, plan budget-friendly ways to get together and celebrate. We don't necessarily go out for our anniversary anymore. We've been married for, how old am I, 51? 26 years. It'll be 27 years this summer. And we don't necessarily go out for our anniversary anymore. We definitely don't buy gifts for each other for our anniversary. If we do go out, it's an early modest dinner that we enjoy. I actually rather go out for lunch or breakfast myself. That makes it a little bit more budget friendly. We love to get together. My daughter-in-law's birthday is the day before mine, so we get together for one night and order pizza and have a pizza party with the kids to celebrate our birthdays. i rather do that than go out to dinner or buy gifts for each other. So these are 20 ways that us debt-free people live our lives and the tips and techniques that we use to stay debt-free. I hope you got a few golden nuggets out of this. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate you and have a great day. Bye-bye.